Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, coming to you with a very fun tutorial, and that is going to be the film strip transition. So it's gonna look a little something like this. So there you have it. It is a pretty fun sort of transition to create. It's on the advanced side, uh, in creation aspects, but it is really fun effect and you'll learn a lot through creating it. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is we need to create ourselves a new composition. We need basically a blank composition to start with um, for this effect, although you can use it really any sequence that you want. It just might get a little messy uh, later on. So what we're going to do first is drag in our first piece of footage, and that's going to just be the beginning of this right here. And so we have this piece of footage rolling right here, and we want to start the transition. So what we need before we start the transition is we need something for it to transition into. What I have is this overlay right here. I found it just by going to YouTube, searching film strip overlay, and then acquiring it off of YouTube. And I can just download it into Premiere Pro and it's good to go. Again, this method might have copyrights assigned to it. So if you're gonna use this for production, make sure to check those out. So once you have this in the uh, in Premiere Pro, what you want to do is you want to start the transition. So let's go forward maybe to about one second. Let's start the transition at one second. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the piece of footage. We're going to go into the scale, and then we're going to move forward about maybe seven or eight, and we're going to scale it down. What we want to do is just scale it to wherever we want, so maybe right about 73. So now we have this, this little transition where it goes down into 73 like so. Now we need to add that actual film strip in as well. So we're going to add the film strip right here, and you're going to notice that right now it's pretty much just you know a piece of footage that's running over it. So what we want to do is we want to click on it, go to its blending mode, and because we'd normally go with screen if it was a black background, but it's a white background. So what we want to do is go with multiply, and you'll see that immediately allows the bottom image to come through. We're then going to scale it up, but not to where it would fit perfectly. We're going to scale it past that to maybe right about there. And then with this scaling down, what we want to do is we want to now scale it down so it fits here. So we're going to scale it to right about where it would look natural, which is right there. And what we first need to do is make sure that you actually have the, so let's go back to the beginning here, make sure you actually have toggled animation on the, um, the piece of footage, move forward to where it stops, which is right there, and then bring it on down to so maybe like right about, right about there. And so now what we have is the beginnings of the effect right here. What we also need to do is you'll see that there's this quick sort of uh, motion here that it turns from nothing and then we have suddenly the blotches. We're just gonna round that out a little bit with a little opacity. So we're going to click on this piece of footage, go up to its effect control, start off at zero opacity, and when the transition starts, just kind of have it round in a little bit. And that's just going to make it look a little bit more natural. It's going to make it so that there isn't this sort of pop really, really fast. And that, like I said, just the little things will help make it a little bit more natural. So now that we have the first piece of footage, it's transitioning downwards. What we can do next is we can actually make it look like that uh, frames are happening right here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our first piece of footage. We're going to duplicate it upward, and at this point, you probably want to move this up. So let's move it up way out of range of everything else so that we can have some room to work down here. Then we're going to want to go to the front of this one, and we're going to want to basically we're going to create the right side, and the right side should be a frame forward. So to make it a frame forward, what we need to do is we need to make sure that it plays before everything else. So we're going to actually drag this over Let's go three frames. The more you do this, the more extreme the effect is going to be. And now you'll see that it's a little bit lagged behind, and that's okay. That's just because we have what it's doing. Um, we're going to take this top piece of footage, so get it to where it stops, which is right here. And then we're going to take the top piece of footage, and we're just going to move it to the right. Whoops, that is the Y. We need to move the X. We're going to move this to the right over here, and we can clear out the scale um, transition here. So now we have this piece of footage but now it's just playing on the right side. So let's get it to right about here, and we're just gonna do a little opacity inward. So we're gonna click on the opacity, bring it down to zero, and just kinda have it fade in right here. And now you'll see that it looks like it's slightly off from the others, or from the left side here. 
and you can see that it is a little bit um, delayed. And let's see, we have the left movement here, and then the left movement happens on the, the middle one. So you can see that right here is where the best part to see it is on the right side, it goes away, and then this left side goes away next. So, so you see that the door is gone completely and there's a couple frames before this door goes completely. So that's exactly what we want. We want it to look like that this is a film strip and that there are all these film sort of pieces are going by really, really fast. So the next thing we're gonna do is we need to create the opposite side. And the opposite side is gonna be the left side and it should be three frames ahead. That one is actually a lot easier to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the original footage, go up to here, and we're just gonna move this one forward three frames. And so now this one is gonna be three frames ahead. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move, get to that exact same point right here. And you'll see that it's, it's ahead this time, so we're gonna move right there. We're gonna take it, we're gonna move it to the right side, I always think that's it. We're gonna use this one, move it to the right side over here. Try to get the spacing lined up. And now we have that there, we can turn off the scale adjustment as well, and then we're also gonna need to do that opacity adjustment, so right here, bring the opacity to zero, one, two, bring the opacity up to 100%. And so now what we have is we have this film look to it where it looks like the the everything is like a film strip is flowing through here and that so you can see that this one disappears then this one disappears this one has already disappeared so they are in order and that kind of sells the effect just a little bit next thing we want to do is we want to actually create that transition if you want to make this a little bit more extreme, we can do that a little bit later, uh, make it look a lot more like staccato, we can do that. But let's go ahead and do the next part of the transition first. So the next part of the transition is going to actually require us to nest the footage. So what that means is we're going to actually cr make a new sequence out of these three pieces of footage. So we're going to click on these, we're going to right click, and then we're going to click nest. And we want to name this um, like maybe like footage or the film strip videos something like that. So now you'll notice that nothing has changed except that it's all one right here. The reason we want to do that is because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a slide out transition. So we're going to be going, uh, let's go maybe, so it comes in at that second, um, maybe right about there, we want it to sort of move over. So we're going to go, we're going to click on this new nested sequence. We're going to click on the position. We're going to move forward about seven. And then we're going to move it over. And you'll notice that it's chopped at the edges. And that's because this is the property of a, se of a nested sequence is that, that that content isn't there. This is all that the video is now. It's just this um, whatever is in the frame. But that's okay. That's fine. We're going to move this off frame, just off frame like so. And so now we have the sort of move. Next thing we need to do, and you notice that it goes about the speed of this, which kind of really sells the effect as well. But the next thing we need to do is we need to add in our next piece of footage. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here into our project panel. You'll see that there's film strip videos right here. That's the, the sequence that we've created. We're gonna right click on that, right click on the sequence itself, and we're gonna go up to duplicate. Now you're gonna see there's film strip videos copy one. We can rename this to maybe uh, film strip videos second or something, something to just tell us it's different. Now we're gonna double click on this to open it up. And then now we have our other piece of footage. So you see this is 479, 479, 479. We're gonna go up to 491. We're going to click on this and we're gonna hold the Alt key. I talked about this in the last tutorial. What we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the footage. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key and I'm gonna drag it on to all three of these. And what you'll notice is that it's going to just drag on all the properties and everything exactly like the other video. So now what we've done is we've essentially created the second part to this. We're then going to grab film strip second. We're going to drag it in here. And what we need is we need the point where it's already like this. So that's all the point that we need. And then we're going to go to that point where it transitions right here. We're going to drag our film so that it's up here. And then we're going to take this position and we're going to, I always grab that one. We're going to grab and drag this right off film or off screen right here. We're then going to animate the position. We're going to move forward one frame and we're going to do a little keyframe matching right here and just we're just going to try to put this piece to the left why this works with this little like nub of a piece right here is because the motion is so fast that your eyes kind of fill in the rest so even though it's off right here 
whenever this moves really fast, we're going to not notice that there's this little cut in here. And I'll show you that in just a second. So we're gonna keep this moving up right there. And then finally, the last one is just to make sure that it fits perfectly right there. Um, to make sure that it fits completely perfectly, you can just hit the default reset parameter button, and then I'll put it back to where it started. And you'll notice I was one pixel off, so that's a good idea to do is that little reset parameter. So now what we have is we have this effect. We have the movement from one to the next, and you'll notice that because of the fast movement, you don't really notice those little sort of side, that little uh, combination we created. It just looks pretty natural moving from one to the next. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to now end the effect. So we did about a half a second on this side, so we should do about a half a second on the other side. So it comes down, half a second, and then let's see, it goes about there. So maybe right about here. Easiest way to do this is to actually just scale up this footage again. You can go back into film strip videos and scale uh, the middle one back up if you want. However, what we can do, and I believe it doesn't remove quality, is we can take this one, set a, uh, keyframe here so let's see it's moving right here we have oops my bad this is the wrong composition that's the original one we have this one right here so what we're gonna do is we're going to set the scale keyframe move forward maybe one two three four five six seven that's where I usually like to go and scale this one back up so that it fits what it should normally fit and then of course what we want to do is scale our overlay as well. So we're going to click on the overlay, create a keyframe, move forward, and then have it scale back up so that it's out of frame right here, right there. Jump back to the beginning. So to jump back to this first keyframe, we're going to click this little left button. Start the opacity as well. Jump back to that end keyframe, turn the opacity off, and our effect is completed. So now it comes out, moves over, zooms in. Pretty simple, really neat to do. A uh, really fun effect to create. And now we have the, uh, the effect uh, basically created. Now, a little addition to that effect is if we want to make it look a little bit more like I was saying, like staccato, what we can do is we can actually go into the effects over here and we can search for an effect. It's called Posturize Time. So we're going to go down. It's in Video Effects Time and then Posturize Time. And then what we want to do is we want to actually apply this to this first one right here. So you notice that there's this frame rate right here. And if we play it back, uh, our sequence frame rate right now, so if we go to sequence, sequence settings, is set to 24 frames per second. So that's what this is gonna default to as well. I don't know if it always defaults to the sequence settings or if it just always defaults to 24. What you wanna do is set this to your sequence. What we're gonna do is we wanna turn this keyframe on. Then we wanna move forward. So right here is actually where we should turn it on. So let's drop a keyframe there, move to this one click on it and delete it. So we want to start right before this starts. And then we want to move forward. And at this point, what we want is this whole thing to play at maybe a little bit less speed. And what that's going to do is going to create this sort of uh, film like look to it. You can see that it looks like there uh, that the frames are actually going by it makes it un sort of that flow. And it creates this this neat like basically like frames are coming by and it makes it look really good with these side ones as well. And then you'll also notice if we do the exact same thing over here. So if we drag this effect on, start it at where it should be, which is 10. So turn this on to that 10. You'll notice that it has that really neat effect on the other side as well. And then as it zooms in, create a keyframe, move forward till the animation is done and reset it to 24. So now it goes dun, 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 and then it goes back to normal motion. So that is a really neat way to sort of create this effect. It's a fun effect to create. And yeah, really neat, really fun. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comments section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.